All right, so we're uh, continuing Exodus chapter four, and this is just has some really good stuff about us being bold um, as ministers of God. So let's get into it. All right, verse 10. But Moses replied to the Lord, please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, either in the past or recently, or since you have been speaking to your servant, because I am slow and hesitant in speech. The Lord said to him, who made the human mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. Moses said, please, Lord, send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, isn't Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well and also he is on his way now to meet you. When he sees you, his heart will rejoice. You will speak with him and tell him what to say. I will help both you and him to speak and will teach you uh, both what to do. He will speak to the people for you. He will be your spokesman and you will serve as God to him and and take the staff in your hand that you will perform the signs with. And so here we have, man, God just proved to Moses that he was going to be with him, that he was going to do signs and wonders through him. Realize that that God just turned his staff into a snake and his hand leprous and then back again to being healthy. And then Moses is saying that, you know, please choose someone else. And man, this is how we are. God has done amazing things for us. He made us. He sent Jesus for us. And and we should be bold in our mission. Now, you shouldn't do anyone else's mission. You should find out what your mission is. But man, that's that's how Moses should have responded as, you know what? I feel like I am not capable of ministering for God, but God clearly shows he's powerful and God's with me. It's going to be OK. And that's how we should react it. Um, and then Moses didn't do that, but it's so gracious of God to, to not pick someone else, but he gave him someone to help him. So isn't that amazing that when we do fall short of being bold, that God will bring people to help us just like he, he provided Aaron to help Moses. Next, this interesting verse where it says, God says, um, you know, who made the human mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord now go and I will help you speak. So you know, we know that that God, God gave Adam and Eve the ability to speak and in all their senses. And then Adam and Eve sinned and that brought death into the world. And then, of course, that brought sicknesses. And then, you know, all of nature is against itself that brought thorns and you know, animals kill each other now. And all this is because of sin. But I think it's interesting to know that that God does choose some people to have um you know, these, these physical issues. Number one, just, just existing is gracious from God, right? So even if we just existed and we only had, you know, if, if we were blind or mute or deaf, um, you know, it still would be better to exist with flaws than to not exist at all. And Jesus said that, you know, people experience those things, not because of their sin, but because God can be glorified through it. So God wants to be glorified in the, in the areas that we are flawed. Isn't that beautiful? You know, the Bible says that God works all things together for good, for those who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose. So you might say, man, how could a loving God cause so much pain in the world? There's disease. People have issues. People have lost, lost legs and sight. People are born without certain things. Uh, and we have to understand that, you know, God could have wiped us all out. He could have wiped out our ancestors because of sin and kept us from existing. So number one, it's God's grace that we even exist. Uh, number two, uh, God promises to use all the things that we think are, um, are wrong and all the pain and all the diseases and all the, the dysfunction. He's going to use that to our advantage. And then also that, um, you know, that's the way it should be that, that God, you know, because there is sin in the world, it's good that humans have physical limitations. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's good that, you know, we're not all invincible and, and, and completely capable of doing everything because so many people would use that for evil. You know, man, many times I think God does need to, uh, it, it does help when people, I'm not saying people are sick or people lose abilities because of sin, but it is good at sometimes for God to have someone get injured you know, like Nebuchadnezzar, he had pride and then he acted like an animal for, I think, seven years. You know, a lot of times we do need sickness to bring us down and to humble us. Um, 
because pride is the enemy. Understand that pride is the enemy. And so it is good that, um, and selfishness is, is the enemy. And so it's, you know, it's appropriate that we are in a world of pain because that pain is supposed to drive us to God because he can fix everything. It would be bad if we were in a world where everything was perfect and there was sin. Well, no one would really want to fix the sin issue if sin didn't have any consequences. So I think that's important for us to realize that sin brings consequences. It's good that there's consequences because that sobers us up and should drive us to God and not away from him. So may you do that.